This video will explore some of the long, long term effects of uh, removal of the gallbladder. Let's just look at this uh, cartoon of, um, of the inside of the abdomen. So, this is the liver on the right, over here in the belly. The gallbladder is connected to this tube called the bile tube. The bile is produced by the liver, it comes down and then goes into the gallbladder. And the gallbladder has two important functions it concentrates bile and it then squirts it down when it's needed when food arrives, especially if it's fatty food over here. It also absorbs some of the bile salts um, over here into its wall. The bile then enters the small bowel as shown over here. And in the last segment of the small bowel around here, uh, the bile salts are reabsorbed into the blood and then they arrive back into the, back into the liver uh, so that they are now let's look at some of the long-term effects of gallbladder. So the gallbladder is now gone and studies have shown that in a small proportion of patients they would describe discomfort, flatulence and mild diarrhea. And this mild diarrhea may be worse if they have a large amount of fatty food. More specifically, there is a condition called bile acid diarrhea and that occurs because the bile is concentrated and a proportion of, as I said before, a proportion of bile salts are absorbed. And when that does not happen, more and more of the bile salts arrives at the small bowel over here so that it then overcomes the capacity of this segment of the bowel to absorb the bile salts, to push it back towards the liver. That does not happen. And now we have excess of bile salts arrived, arriving in the colon. And this has an irritant effect on the colon and hence uh, patients tend to get diarrhea. Now, it can be easily controlled with bile uh, salt binding resin and what it does is as the name suggests uh, it binds the bile salt so that by the time they arrive in the colon uh, they are no longer in a state where they can cause a diarrhea. So this happens in about 10% of the patients uh, and really um, those who've had gallbladder removed and suffer from this ought to report it to their doctors. A further small subset, uh, again around roughly between 8 and 10% of the patients find that they've had the gallbladder removed and actually unfortunately the pain does not go away or it goes away for a short period of time and it comes back. And the main reasons are outlined above. So retained stones, what does that mean? I mean, the gallbladder is gone, so why should there be stones? That is because, yes, this section, this section of the gallbladder is gone, but the stones may be in this part of the, um, of the cystic duct, or they may be in the bile tube itself, uh, like over here. And either of these uh, may give rise to uh, pain after the gallbladder removal. So let's just, so the gallbladder is now gone and you could have either stones over here, a cystic duct or the bowel duct. Uh, peptic ulcer disease, that's uh, ulcer forming in the stomach or the early small bowel. Irritable bowel uh, may have symptoms that can be confused with gallstone disease and gallstones are very common. Sphincter of body dysfunction. This pertains to the sphincter that everyone has at the bottom of the bowel tube over here around the bowel tube and the pancreatic tube and there is a specific condition uh, that can then affect the way the bile comes in. Bile duct strictures can arise so if the gallbladder during gallbladder removal uh, the bile tube itself can sometimes be injured and cause narrowing and if that happens as shown over here that sometimes can cause pain. The pain may be pancreas related and it could be several causes such as pancreatitis or an abnormality in the way the pancreas tube delivers pancreatic juice called pancreas divisum. It may also be gullet related as over here. Hence, if patients have symptoms that have not been resolved by removal of the gallbladder, they need to see a specialist to look into all of these and then some other causes as well. There is some evidence to suggest that patients tend to gain weight after their gallbladder removal and this affects the liver and there is a higher incidence of fatty liver disease which in some patients may actually 
progress to cirrhosis. So the causal relationship between gallbladder removal itself and this condition of fatty liver directly has not been established. In large population studies, there has been a slightly increased risk of colon cancer after gallbladder removal, and this is the right side of the colon. It's this section of the colon uh, where the, this risk is increased compared to the normal population by a factor of 1.6. So this culminates some of the effects of removal of gallbladder long term. I'll finish this talk by, by stipulating that for the great majority of the patients, uh, 8 to 9 out of 10, 80 to 90 percent of the patients derive benefit from removal of uh, the gallbladder and if they are gallstones that are causing symptoms or complications then removing the gallbladder is a standard way of dealing with it. Thank you very much and if you have your own experience to share please do that in the comment section.